In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite way of making flying geese, and that's with my AccuQuilt die cutter. I'm Jennifer, and this is Intelligent Quilting. When you want to make flying geese with an AccuQuilt cutter, I typically start with, uh, well, there's two dies that you need, and those two dies you will find in your cube. I buy cubes of different sizes. Uh, this is an eight inch cube. There's a six inch, I've got 10 and 12. Don't have them all yet, but I really like them because each cube comes with a set of dies that allows you to make common quilt units like flying geese, like half square triangles, like quarter square triangles, etc. To make flying geese, you're going to need two dies. Going to need this one, which is die number four. Yeah, going to need this one, which is die number four, and this one, which is die number five. Die number four will cut your goose unit, and die number five will cut the sky part. So let's get started. Um, these are the flying these are the flying geese that I'm trying to make. So my goose unit is blue. I'm using die number, let me just make sure I get it right, die number four to cut the goose unit. And to figure out how wide to cut my strips, you just measure the width here and then add about a half an inch. Notice also that I have marked my dies so I know where the cutter is so I can make sure like that I'll cut off this selvage here by putting it past that mark. And let's see, so also you can layer up to six layers at a time with my particular cutter. If you had a studio cutter, you can cut even more at a time. I've been cutting my uh, geese, so I don't really need that many more. So I'm gonna, I'm folding it only three times, but you could just keep folding up to six layers to get the number of uh, geese you have to cut. Remember one of these, uh, one square is cutting four, so you're going to get four geese every time you have a layer. So with three layers, I'm going to get 12 geese. That happens to be how many I need. So see how easy it is to just cut cut these. So now I have 12 more geese to add to the pile of geese I've already cut. And this took like two minutes. I don't know. <laughs> it's just amazingly fast. Um, you'll see also that it produces very accurate geese. So I don't, I will check them for size when I'm done sewing, um, but they'll be the right size pretty much. So I don't, there won't really be any trimming either. So now that I've cut the geese, it's time to cut the sky unit, and the sky part is is the this part. The goose is the pointy part. Um, and in my geese, that happens to be white. Notice I'm only cutting two of these, so I'm essentially cutting enough for a single goose. So to match how many I've cut here, I'd have to cut four of these. And again, uh, I'm using scraps, so these are actually bigger than I need, um, but that's okay. I just uh, want to use up my scraps for this particular project. So, now let's see if I, maybe I can get one more. It looks like I can, just barely. I just need to make sure 
that the fabric is past. That's what I have those marks for. So I know that I've, I've covered where the blades are. And then let's see, where's my cutting mat? It's time to run it through. And again, for this particular cutter, six layers is the maximum. So that's as far as I stretch it. And I'm going to have more waste than I normally do on these because I'm just using scraps. But now I have my sky and I can add that to the pile of sky triangles that I cut earlier. And this, by the way, was die number five that I used to cut the sky. So now that I have those cut, let me go to the sewing machine and I can show you how they line up perfectly and how you can sew them up. We're at the sewing machine. And as you recall, I've got a blue goose and a white, two white triangles, which will be the sky. So you probably noticed that when AccuQuilt cuts your triangles, it notches them. That helps you put them together perfectly for sewing. Notice also that there's a notch down here. So I'm gonna put right sides together. I'm gonna match the notch here. And at the top, there's gonna to be a little point showing. That's fine. Let me go ahead and pin. And then I'm going to show, uh, sew a quarter inch here. I like to sew on and off a um, scrap of fabric. It helps to keep my thread tension nice from the get-go and avoid any thread nests on the back. So now what I need to do is go press this. I think what I'll do to save time is I'll go ahead and finger press. But you should always press before you do the other side. Oh, I like to press mine open, that's right, so let me that open. See what I'm doing there. Done a good job for now. And it's time to add the other square. Um, right sides together. Match that little notch here at the end. And then, then you're gonna, now at this point, this notch is going to match up with the flat side of the other um, triangle. So let's pin. And we're ready to sew. Sewing on a smaller machine than usual because uh, my big machine is at the spa. Th now I will uh, finger press this for now, but I will go to the ironing board and actually press press. But you'll see. There. It, it's going to measure perfectly when, I'm, when we go and check it. But let's go do that now. Let's press and then check for size. We're back from the sewing machine, so all we need to do is press and check for size. I like to press with a hot, dry iron using my wool pressing mat and my wool clapper to press my seams open. I find that when I press my seams open, I get a little bit more accuracy, so that's why I do it. But um, you don't have to. And if you do choose to press your seams open, you should reduce your stitch length to uh, make those seams a little bit stronger. So I'll press from the front side and then I 
lay my clapper on it. That helps kind of seal the deal, as it were. Then we'll check for size. Let me move that out of the way. Yeah, it's a little off. Uh, let me just... Sometimes that happens when you press your seams open, it twists just a little bit, so let me flatten that perfectly. Okay. Uh, for the size that I'm making, I need it to be um, two and a half inches wide and uh, four and a half inches long, as it were. Let me do both sides here. Yeah. Just always like to check. Yeah, looks like it's pretty much right on target there. Yeah, see the I've got a little thread there; it just won't go away. There you go. And when you're measuring, you want to measure from the halfway point that's right. You want to put your halfway measurement at the point of the goose. And as you can see, it's it's good to go. So with the AccuQuilt method, you get to save a lot of time. And uh, I only just made one, but the cutting is fast and the sewing is fast as well. And there's typically no trimming. So that's why it's my favorite method. <laughs> now, if you do not have an AccuQuilt um, cutter, there is a method that is very similar to this. It's um, called strip method number one. So look for it on my channel. And that would be a, a, a great way of achieving the exact same results, but um, without the die cutter. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and also uh, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next uh, video. I've got one more flying geese method that I'd like to show you, so I'm going to add that soon. Thank you. Bye.